Okay, in today's video, we're going to go through drawing ray diagrams for concave mirrors, and we want to be able to use those ray diagrams to locate the image. Now, here's the general diagram we're going to use. We want to kind of make sure we know the important parts of this diagram. The first one is this white line, horizontal line that runs through the center of the mirror. We call that the principal axis. We have the point C, center of curvature. We have the point F, the focal point, and the focal point is at a distance we call the focal length from the mirror. C is the center of curvature. This is a spherical mirror. It's a big circle. You can leave a circular or spherical mirror. It's a big circle, and C is at the center of that circle. So really, um, the distance from the center of curvature, from C to the mirror, is kind of the radius of that circle. You can think of it that way. We have this point F. The point F is at a focal length um, away from the mirror. And then you'll notice that F is between C and the mirror. So the focal length is 1 half of C. Okay. Now you'll remember for the convex lens video, we had F and 2F. And 2F was twice as far away as F. But now we have F and C. C is twice as far away as F. So really F and 2, excuse me, C and 2F are analogous positions, places on the principal axis. It's just that for a mirror, we call it C, which is the center of curvature. Okay, now what we want to be able to do at the end of this video is regardless of where we place the object, whether we have it beyond C, at C, between C and F, at F, or inside of F, we want to be able to draw the ray diagram and describe the image. Okay, and really, before you even draw the ray diagram, after a little practice, you should be able to describe the image before you even draw the ray diagram, and then you kind of just draw the ray diagram to uh, let your teacher know you know how to draw the ray diagram and to confirm what you know about the image. And you should be able to say something about the location of the image on the principal axis, the size of the image relative to the object, the orientation of the image, and the type of the image. Okay? So here's our first problem. This is the general diagram we're going to use again. Here is the object. Here's the principal axis. Here's the mirror. And you, your eye, and the object are on the same side as the mirror. If you think about how you use a mirror, you're usually looking at something, oftentimes it's your face. Okay, so here's the object, and we need to draw the ray diagram. Now, before we do that, I just want to remind you whether it's a concave mirror, a convex lens, a concave lens, or a convex mirror, you should notice that for all four of those things, the ray diagrams are basically drawn the same way. So you don't have to memorize a bunch of different ways to draw the ray diagrams. You just have to memorize the two or three rules that we're going to use, and then you can apply those rules to all four of those optical devices. Okay? So for example, for the concave mirror, the first ray we draw, we're going to draw it from the tip of the object, and it always goes into the mirror parallel to the principal axis. So this light ray comes off the object, it goes into the mirror parallel to the principal axis, and it comes out through F. So it goes like that. So this one has to be parallel, and this ray, when it's reflected off of the mirror, must go through F. It's just not some random angle, this angle in here. It's drawn so that it goes through F. And you should have a nice straight edge and a nice sharp pen or pencil, preferably in case you make a mistake, when you draw your ray diagrams. Okay, always use a straight edge. It's not a freehand sketch. All right, the next one goes into the mirror, and it goes to the, into the mirror through F, and then it comes out parallel. So this one's the opposite. The first one we drew was parallel F. This one is F parallel, and you'll notice the lines intersect, the rays intersect right there, and that is where the image appears. Okay, now based on that uh, ray diagram, we can say, about the image that when the object is beyond C, greater than C away from the mirror, the image will always be somewhere between C and 2F. The image will always be smaller than the object. When the object is greater than C away, the image will always be inverted and it will always be a real image. It's an image that is created by converging light rays and they converge right there at that point. Okay, so before we go on, let's just review this. We drew two dot. We drew two rays. Parallel was the first one, F. I call I like to call the first one parallel F because it goes in parallel, comes out through F. Then the next one, the second one, goes in through F, 
and then comes out parallel. So they're opposites of each other. Now we're going to do the exact same thing. Now we have moved the object so that it is right at C. So we're going to go parallel F, F, parallel, and you'll notice that the object appears right, excuse me, the image appears right there. It's at the same place as the object right at C. So when the object is at C, the image must also be at C, or will always be at C. It'll always be the same size. It'll always be inverted, and it's still a real image created by converging light rays. Okay, so those two were basically drawn the same way. The third one, we're going to do the same thing again. Now we have moved the object so it's between C and F. So I pick up my nice sharp pencil and my straight edge. I draw my first ray going in parallel, coming out through F. It must go through this point. The next one goes in through F, comes out parallel. So once, once again, it must go through this point. You have to draw it through this point. It's not just some random angle or some random ray. It's the one that goes through F. And there is the image. And you'll notice now that the object is between C and F, the image will always be greater than C away from the lens, excuse me, away from the mirror the image distance is greater than C. That's what DI stands for, image distance. The image will always be magnified. It's bigger than the object. The image will always be inverted, and it's still a real image. Okay? So you should notice, for the first three, we drew them all exactly the same way. Parallel F, F, parallel. And the image appears where those light rays converge, those light rays cross. Okay, now this one's a little different. We're going to draw the first ray exactly the same, parallel F. Now we can't really draw the F parallel because we're right at F. We have moved the M object, so it's right at the focal point. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw a second ray that comes in and strikes the lens, the mirror, right at the principal axis, like that. And then it's going to reflect at an equal angle. So this angle, the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection have to be the same. And you'll notice when we're right at F, these light rays do not converge. They're parallel. In order to get an image, as in the previous three examples, the light rays must converge. They must cross. Parallel rays don't cross. Therefore, when you're at the focal point, when the object is at the focal point, when DO equals F, there is no image ever at all because those light rays are parallel light rays. Okay, so we drew that one a little differently, but it's the same general idea. Okay, here's the last one. Now, finally, we're inside of F. The object is inside the focal point. And you're going to do the same thing with the first one, parallel F. Now, the second one, we're going to draw the same way. We're going to go to the principal axis, and it's going to reflect at the same angle so that the angle of incidence, this angle, and the angle of reflection, this angle, are exactly the same. And you'll notice these light rays don't converge. They're not parallel, but they actually diverge. Now, your eye is over here. It sees these light rays coming towards it. It notices that the light rays are traveling in a straight line. It doesn't know about any of these reflections off of the mirror, so it assumes they traveled in a straight line, and your brain, your eye, follows those light rays back. It's looking for the intersection of those light rays. And if you follow them back, you draw them nicely with your straight edge and your ruler, you'll notice that those light rays converge right there behind the mirror. Okay, so when you're inside the focal point, you'll notice now our image is behind the mirror. So it's located behind the mirror. And you'll, no you'll notice that it's switched from being upside down, inverted, to being right side up, which we technically call erect. You'll notice it's magnified, it's bigger, and you'll notice that what this is a virtual image. The virtual image is an image that is created by diverging light rays that your eye follows back behind the mirror. If you have a makeup mirror, which a lot of women do for putting on their makeup, you'll notice it's a curved mirror and you have to get really close to the mirror and then your eye appears really big. And if you concentrate a little bit, you'll notice that the, your eye looks like it's coming from 
behind the mirror, okay? But it's not, it just appears to come from behind there. That is a virtual image, okay? So there we go, those are the five cases. You should be able to draw them all now carefully. Straight edge, sharp pencil, make sure all your lines are straight, parallel, and all that stuff. Now, this is a somewhat uh, complicated looking table that summarizes the results of the information we gathered from the video. This is for the concave mirror. This is the object distance. We had greater than C, at C, between C and F, at F, and less than F away. This is the information for the image. The image distance, the image orientation, the size, and the type. Now, on here I have the video, excuse me, the table for the concave mirrors and the table for the concave lenses. These are both converging devices. Light rays converge when they come into these devices. And you should notice that the answers, the stuff in this gold color, the answers are exactly the same for the convex lens and the concave mirror. For example, when the object is at C, the image is at C, it's inverted, it's the same size, and it's real. For the convex lens, when the Im object is at 2F, remember F, excuse me, remember 2F and C are the same place on the principal axis, twice the focal length. When the object is at 2F, for the convex lens, the image is at 2F, it's inverted, it's equal in size, and it's real. Let's look at one more case. When you're inside of F, the image appears behind the mirror. When you're inside of F, the image appears behind the lens. When you're inside of F, the orientation is erect or upright. When you're inside of F, the orientation is erect. When you're inside of F, the image is magnified and it's a virtual image. Same thing here, magnified and virtual. The point being, you don't have to memorize the answers for 10 different cases. All you have to do is realize the pattern. As the object gets closer to the lens or the mirror, the image gets farther away and bigger. And it switches from being upside down to right side up when you're inside the focal point. Okay, so don't memorize them. Learn the rules, learn the pattern. It'll be much easier. The answers for the concave uh, mirror and the convex lens are exactly the same. Okay, so I know that's a lot of information, but draw your ray diagrams, think about it a little bit, and it will all come together very nicely. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you in the next lens and mirror video.